G'day folks, I'm Rex Hunt. Well, I think that I am, but anyhow, I'm still here. And we're having a lot of fun getting down into the cellar and putting a little bit of dusting material on and some of this footage is just absolutely fantastic and we've got some more for you on this particular cast. Pod, whatever cast it is, I don't know what it is, it's a broadcast, but anyhow, Steve is standing by on the south coast of New South Wales and will be with us very, very shortly. Now, with a little bit of sun out this afternoon and the rain has cleared across to the west, my thoughts start at this time of the year in Australia to trout fishing. And I know you've got to check your regulations for stream fishing in Tasmania, Victoria and New South Wales because they're all different. However, it'd be just nice to get out on the trout because I love trout. On this particular program, we've got a fantastic episode on the west coast of Tasmania. It's rugged, it's cold, but I catch my first sea-run brown trout in the Hendy River with Bushy. And it looks like milk, but my goodness me, the trout found the spinner okay. And then we go up to Lake Eugenbein. Just nearby is Lake Jindabyne. Now, Jindabyne is a fantastic memory for me because I had some great fishing there on my honeymoon nearly 50 years ago, and I'm still paying for it, folks, I can tell you now. But on a serious note, I want to show you what trout fishing means to me. First up, there's a lovely shot of a magnificent little brown trout in the lower Stevenson River, about an hour and a half from Melbourne Port on a fly. And that's really what I love doing, getting out on those small streams. Now, the next one is the Eugenbean River at the start of the spawning run. And have a look at the colours of that particular brown. Just absolutely magnificent. Of course, all catch and release. Now, the next photo is me with hair, which is unusual. <laughs> Goodness gracious me. This is opening day 1968, which is quite amazing because it's Lake Eldon and that's five lovely brown trout that I got opening day on a gold wobbler with a friend of mine called Bob Gibb. Now, the next one, I'll warn you now, look away now because have a look at the audience I've got when I'm tying on a fly, sitting on a log on the Stevenson River at Marysville. And I can tell you now, I'm starting to get a little bit guilty of the magnificent bit of rump steak I'm going to have tonight with a bit of horseradish and a few steamed veggies. I'm very, very guilty. Instead of 500 grams, I'm going to have a kilo. <laughs> no, I'm an idiot, but I tell you what, I'm alive. Now, Steve, you've been very good to hang on. And Starlo and Bushy have been magnificent in their support of all this stuff that's going to air. And Starlo, Thanks for joining us again and say good day to my audience and your audience. Together, they're our audience. Thanks for that, Rex. And it was great to see some of those old photos of a young Rex enjoying his trout fishing. And just like Rex, I've, I've been crazy about my trout fishing since the first time I ever did it as a teenager a long, long time ago. But I guess. We need to address the elephant in the room about trout. They are an introduced species. They're not native to Australia. And in some ways they're, they're an exotic, just exactly the same as uh, redpin perch or carp or cane toads or whatever else. So we need to, we need to recognize that and to recognize the fact that some people reckon we'd be better off without them. I'm not one of those people. I think that we need to make a subjective judgment about the value of the things that we've brought into this country and I think that trout have actually added considerably in economic, social and recreational terms to the fabric of Australia. I really enjoy fishing for them and I know that a lot of other people do and it supports a lot of small economies in some of our uh, rural and, and country areas around the, around the country. I also totally agree that there are plenty of places where they shouldn't be continually stocked uh, there's a lot of marginal waters these days where trout are not doing all that well uh, and we should be looking at re-establishing native fish in those areas but in some of our highland streams and in many of the Tasmanian waters where they live trout are a really important part of the overall fishing scene and that's why we've devoted this entire episode of the fishing hub live stream to trout fishing the trout season's already open in Tasmania. It's about to open in a week or so in Victoria. It's about a month or so away in New South Wales. But there are also places all across the sweep of the country where you can catch trout, where you can fish for them all year round. And I know people love chasing them on lures, on bait. My favourite is on fly. 
but tonight we're going to share with you some clips from the old Rex Hunt fishing adventures days on TV that show Rex and Bushy chasing trout in a couple of fantastic locations and then I'm going to bring you uh, a newer clip on trout fishing a really interesting way to do it in Tasmania where you can fly in hire a boat and a vehicle and be straight on to trout fishing straight away now as always please feel more than welcome to hit us with your questions or comments as, as the show unfolds I'll try and get to them while we're running the clips but let's get straight to that first clip now and it's Rex and Bushy fishing the Henty River on the west coast of Tasmania for sea run brown trout this is a really interesting one uh, and check out how cold the guys are <laughs> Folks, Bushy has won the toss and has elected to kick with the breeze. I reckon it's about a 10 goal win here, Bushy. I'll tell you what, I hope it's a 10 fish win. <laughs> How'd you think when the alarm went off this morning? Well, you weren't there with the coffee for me, I noticed that. <laughs> Folks, believe it or not, this is 5 past 5 a.m. on the wild west coast of Tasmania, getting towards the middle of November. The cameraman and the sound man are usually in shorts. I they've got trench coats on now. Bushy, this is seriously uh, West Coast material here. It's a magnificent area, though. It's fantastic. We've got huge sand dunes over at the back of us, and hopefully a run of whitebait along the edge here so that some big sea run trout will come in and hammer it. Not a lot of people have actually experienced the run of brown trout that make their way to the sea and actually live and, uh, and play and frolic in these magnificent conditions. As against the fresh water ones that we go after, these are quite different. You wouldn't rather be in bed with your missus turning the electric blanket from three down to two. You'd rather be out here with me, wouldn't you? Uh, yes, Rex. I saw a little international fax come through our accommodation back there in Strawn a moment ago. It was about a little polar bear that said to his mother, Mum, you sure I'm a polar bear? She said, why do you ask, son? He said, how come I'm always cold? Well, she, I think we'd better go fishing, folks. That's what the weather does to you, folks. Oh, tell you what, I'm just about to give it away. Yeah, they're supposed to be riding close. I don't know what's. Jesus, look out! No, you oh, can't see. Oh, we ride at our feet. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> ride right at your feet. Come on, come on, fish. Have you done this before? <laughs> oh, it was just pure luck, mate. Have you done this before, sea runners? No, not here. I have in Victoria, but not down here. Look at that. Ride right at your feet. Look at that. He's a nice fish too. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Just that little Tilson, uh, little shallow running minnow. I tell you what, he is a nice fish, Bushy. Oh, I'll slide him up the bank. Hang on. Oh, that's a serious trout. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, well, we've come good. Now, isn't that a magnificent looking fish? I tell you what, beautiful colours, isn't it? It was a bit windy for the fly rods, so we've had to uh, have to grab the spin rod because this wind is freezing. Look out! I tell you is what, Bushy, oh, Bushy, we're in the surf. Look out! <laughs> It's a tidal wave, a tsunami. <laughs> Can you tell us just a little bit about the sea run brown trout, particularly the sea run fishery of this west coast here in Tassie? Well, these fish actually run to sea. Most of the brown trout, as you know, are spawned in the stream and they live in the stream for most of their lives. But some trout, we don't know exactly why. He's a lively one, Rex. Isn't he lively? We don't know exactly why. Run to sea and they eat all the little uh, fish, bait, prawns that are out there 
and they get very, very fit. So the meat's red, strong fish. Well, he's fit. You might just sort of see if we can get him, yeah, to, get him, get him to go back now, mate. Okay, just a nice fish, eh? He's going to be fine. Well, I tell you what, this is this is a first for me and for you, mate. Yep. So you got a bit of a kick to him. There yep. he goes. Just he's as fine. easy as that. Now, yep. folks, the new range of K bush fishing rods is going to come out very, very soon. Bushy, can you just explain to us that very short butt version of your rod there? Rexy's been having a go at me about this butt for about the last three days, but when I packed to come down to Tassie, I was in a bit of a hurry and uh, the rod wouldn't fit into the tube, folks. So uh, rather than get a new tube, I uh, took the hacksaw to the rod. So there you are, folks, and particularly the kids, there's a lesson. If the rod tube's not long enough, get a shorter rod. I tell you what, talking about rod, where is that rod green? This is disgraceful. Working conditions. Bushy, I think we'll go on strike. <laughs> See you later. Hi ho, hi ho. It's, it's off to work we go. We're fishing in the Hinty River. <laughs> the old man walked in and said, Rexy. Weed. You're kidding. Uh, weed's kicking. Weed's the kicking. The weed's kicking. You wouldn't believe it, Bushy. Ah. Oh. You wouldn't believe it. Look at this. I tell you what, no wonder Harry couldn't pick up the <laughs> trout, mate. You could just hardly see it. Now, have a look at that. That is my first sea run brown trout. Have I tell you what, Bushy, that was your first. So we've broken the duck. And we believe, from our friends here in Tasmania, this is the first time that's ever been captured on film, brown trout in the salt water. Yeah, that's amazing, Look at isn't that. it? A little tack of it still. Now, Bushy, 22,000 kilometres that way, what is it? Patagonia. And that is on the southern tip of South America, and you can't get any further south from that. Folks, there you go. <laughs> Look at this. You want a Dairy Queen? <laughs> hey, you're on a diet. I tell you what, folks, it's been Wild West. Blow the top off one, to certainly blow the dog off the chain here. If the dog wasn't there, the chain would be there. I think I'll go home to my wife and Mister, mate. I said, I think I've had enough of this. But folks, the wild west coast of Tasmania is certainly west. This is Kay Bush. I'm Rex Hunt. And this is Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures. I tell you what, I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> How good was that? And I don't think the boys were hamming it up. I think they were genuinely freezing. It gets damn cold on that west coast of Tasmania, even in November and early December. And those sea trout are an amazing phenomenon. They're actually brown trout that will run down and live in the estuaries, eating crabs and prawns and little bait fish, and then go back up into the rivers in the late autumn and early winter to spawn alongside the, the resident brown trout that stay up there in the fresh water. They're, they're found in a few systems in Victoria, fairly isolated areas where you can, you can find a few sea trout, but the real stronghold of them is Tasmania, especially on that wild west coast. And of course, over in New Zealand, there's quite a few places where sea run browns and even a few sea run rainbows are caught. It, uh, it really is a fascinating fishery. Okay, uh, keep, the, um, keep the comments and questions coming in. I'm doing my best to, to answer and respond to some of them while we're running the clips. And I'm about to run another clip now from the old Rex Hunt Adventures days. And, and this one is again Rex and Bushy, but they're back on the mainland and they're fishing a very popular trout water in the form of Lake Jindabyne, one of my favourite spots over the years for chasing trout. And again, they've got the spin gear out and they're walking the shoreline and casting lures. And I think Bushy might have that same little modified rod with the sawn off butt that he used in the, uh, in the sea trout segment. Anyway, enjoy and have a look at this. Fantastic. Wagons, ho! Oh, oh. Oh. Thank you, 
father for the rabbits. Just when they think it's safe to come out. Oh, it's not an animal! Bang! <laughs> I guess in the end that's probably why we all go fishing. Well, folks, welcome to the snowy mountains in southern New South Wales just before winter. And I'm saying just before winter, Bushy, what's it going to be like when it gets to winter? Yeah, I don't think it's very far from winter. <laughs> <laughs> and Lake Jindabyne behind me, folks, is damming the waters of the snowy and the Threadbow rivers, and it's a serious trout area, Bushy. Yeah, very much so, Rexy. And what people don't realise is that even coming on winter, you can come up here, you don't really even need a boat. You can walk the bank, throw a Tassie Devil out there with a very good chance to catch a fish. There are some serious fish here, folks. And by the way, we were coming across this little bay and I said to Bushy, what is the name of this bay? And you said Kangaroo Bay, and I stupidly said why and why. Well, later on, if we're walking back, there'll be nine million kangaroos over there on that flat. That's and why that's they... why they call it Kangaroo Bay, folks. Uh, enough of this. Let's go fishing. Come on, Bushy, let's catch a fish. I'm feeling lucky. So am I. That was a surprise. Boy, Jingo. Just a small fish. Just a small fish. Could be in the little Atlantic salmon, perhaps. What do we got here? No, we've got a pretty lively sort of a fish. I think it is a little rainbow. But look at the absolute beautiful condition that that's in. Now, that is a real little bullet. And he's taken that particular Tassie devil as if there was no tomorrow. Look at that. Wow, we. Now, just a minute, young fella. Just a minute. Should be able to get that out of there, all right? I can. And I'll give him a bit of a kiss and put him back. But first of all, just let me say to you that this is a rainbow trout. Now, in these areas, if you don't see that big red sash going right up the middle of the body, the way to tell these are a rainbow is the spots on the tail. Now, he's a fish of about a year old, and I'll just let him go like that. But, gee, that was a good start. The old Tasmanian devil. No fur on it, but the reason I've used a pink one at this time of the year, which is the start of winter for those people not in Australia, is that the fish are starting to get into spawning mode. The browns will go first, and then the rainbows will follow in around about two or three months' time. And pink, bushy, that was a very, very nice fish. You and know, it was your suggestion I put on a pink lure. You are unbelievable. Look where my lure is. My lure's still stuck in my rod and you've caught a fish. I hate that. Well, well, I know you do hate this, but, but come here, bushy. <laughs> the thing about it is, folks, everyone knows that I like having a little bit of a punt on the horses and the footy, and I wondered, bushy, when you're going to actually pick up the bet. Which bet? The Essendon bet? No, the one that you've actually made by wearing that hat. <laughs> Les Siddons, eat your heart out. It is a, it's got a big knob on the back of it. What's wrong with it? It just happens to be the way they go. I didn't know it was Les's hat when I bought it. It was a big blob. It's a good right. start here, folks. I think we might get a fish or two here. But that rainbow was very, very good. Not a bad little fish. Well, Rexy's gone up the bank and he's caught two nice fish on a Tassie Devil. So you get with the strength in fishing. When something's working, you switch to it. Give him a bit of a wash. 
another nice little brownie. So Rexy was having this success. So I've just uh, put the Tassie Devil on as well and uh, a few casts and bingo. So these fish are pretty willing today actually. We haven't been here long and, uh, and we've had a bit of a strike. So there you go. I think we'll let this one go if I can get this hook out of him. All right, and we'll let him go. She's nearly all over, mate. She's getting dull. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Was she? <laughs> oh, look how you started it, Daniel. Look how you finished it. You're unreal. Now, we don't have the little box with the curtain going across, but I have a little confession to make. I've changed lures. <laughs> oh, mate. And it's not our good friend Dick Lures. I put a little Pegron Tiger Minnow on. And I just thought, well, they might have seen enough of the old Tassie Devils. And Bob's your uncle. Wow, what a nice little fish. Another little rainbow. And he has slammed that lure as if there's no tomorrow. Sometimes you've got to wonder why they would go for a piece of metal if there's a worm there or a natural insect like a dragonfly. It's just that they're born with that instinct, aren't they? Yeah, I think they just reckon it's a little minnow or something died in class. He's yeah. it. But isn't he a lovely bullet-sized rainbow. Like, like that is a football, isn't it? Yeah, that'd be good eating. Wow, just fantastic. I reckon he's a pound and a half in the little scale. i tell you what, look at that, folks. Beautiful condition rainbow. It'd be a natural spawner. Nice little fish, eh? Yep, he's a real bullet. <laughs> no, no. Hang on, there's one over there. <laughs> i tell you what, Bushy is very, very quick. I'll give him a kiss and put him back. Oh, nice cast, Bushy. Well, folks, it's still one of my favourite and passionate forms of fishing. Casting and retrieving lures. It's called spinning. Taking a bit of fresh air. Walking a few metres. Just taking in the marvellous highlands of southern New South Wales. And Lake Jindabyne's a good place to come and get a rainbow or brown trout. And this particular piece of water, Kangaroo Bay, not bad at all. I tell you what, still got me puzzled why they call it Kangaroo Bay. So there you go, Lake Jindabyne. It can be a great trout fishery at times. I've had some wonderful experiences there, especially in middle to late winter, about this time of year actually, walking the banks with Bushy with a fly rod and polarised sunglasses, actually spotting nice big brown trout and casting flies to them. And over that sandy bottom, you can see them really well when they're up along the edges cruising. Some, some of the best trout fishing I've ever done on mainland Australia, I reckon. But it's not always like that. It has its fluctuations. Most of the mainland trout waters do these days. They have their good years and their not so good years. Uh, and you've just got to you just got to take that as it comes. But when COVID's finished, we'll be able to travel again. We'll be able to go to places like New Zealand. We'll be able to go back to Tasmania, one of my favourite places to go trout fishing. And in fact, this next clip that I want to show you is about a really fascinating way of going to Tasmania, getting on a plane in the morning getting off there at lunchtime, picking up a boat and a hire car and be catching trout by late that afternoon. It's a really good option thanks to a fantastic business that operates down there. Now, Joe and I checked it out a couple of years ago. Have a look at this. Starlo Gets Real is my YouTube channel devoted to all things fishing related. It features tests, reviews and product information along with great fishing tips and advice. Why not subscribe so that you don't miss a thing? Tasmania is one of my favourite Aussie fishing destinations. It not only offers world-class trout fishing, but it also has some great saltwater options. Best of all, it's so close. I can literally leave my home in southern New South Wales early in the morning and be fishing late that same afternoon in Tasmania. There are some pretty cheap flights on offer these days too, and it's literally a hop, skip and a jump from Melbourne, Sydney, 
Canberra or Adelaide across to the Apple Isle. Of course, you're a bit limited in what you can take with you when you fly, and you're not going to arrive with your own car and boat. However, nowadays there's an amazing service on offer that takes care of all of that. Clinton Howe from Tassie Boat Hire picked us up right outside the airport. He drove us to a nearby service centre and ran us through the very comprehensive boat and vehicle package that he offers to customers. Uh, please. Uh, waterproof torch in that front hatch there, mate. Yeah. Clinton's 420 Quintrax Renegade is fully set up and comprehensively equipped with everything the fly in angler needs. Now, just as we go through, the, it's got a battery management system in it. The instructions are on the front of the hatch, but really, see when you start, both red switches to the on position, right, and you're right to run. That'll run your electronics, uh, your house, and your front battery. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, obviously, if there's an issue, if you have a flat battery, we just emerge in parallel with the yellow. Oh, right, so then that becomes, both batteries become your crank battery. Mm -hmm. It's a great rig with plenty of space for freshwater and estuary fishing. Oh, pretty much, I think that's up. We couldn't wait to get on the road and we found the Triton tow vehicle great to drive as we headed for the Central Highlands and a date with some trout. We wasted no time getting the boat wet and were immediately impressed by how well everything worked, from the trailer set up to the essential electric motor on the bow with its remote control, to the oversized fully plumbed live well. This rig is actually completely tournament ready, in fact ABT Brim Tournament anglers are amongst Clinton's most regular customers. Clinton even throws in one of those nifty Tasmanian droves for drift fishing. You really couldn't ask for more in a hire boat package. It's clearly been put together by someone who knows their fishing and it didn't take us long to christen it. <laughs> that first trout might not have been a trophy, but we were soon headed out in search of larger adversaries. Conditions were breezy on Woods Lake, and we decided to drift with the drogue deployed and cast wet flies. Every time I come down here to Tassie, I say I've got to get myself one of these Tasmanian-style drogues. They're so much better than the parachute ones. Got much more control. I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to catch a big trout, big trout. And sure enough, it didn't take too long to hook that big trout. Just let it go. Nice and light, I'm on a four pound tippet, little hook. Can't pull too hard on him. Oh, here we go, he's, he's waking up now. Oh yes, here we go. Watch that drogue. Mm. Oh, what's that drogue? I do love Woods Lake. It's probably one of my favourite lakes in Tassie. Being able to get on a plane in the morning and be doing this stuff in the afternoon. Thanks to Tassie Boat Hire. Oh, it's a cracking fish. Wow! Pretty happy with that. <laughs> There's just something very, very special about Tasmania's wild brown trout, and they don't come much prettier than this one. But it turned out to be just the first of many for a memorable week, with the odd rainbow thrown in for variety. We caught them on dries, nymphs and wets, on sunny days and cloudy ones, but every one was a memory in the making, to be savoured for a lifetime. If you'd like to find out how to make your own Tasmanian memories, give Clinton a call on the number shown here, visit his page on Facebook, or check out the Tassie Boat Hire website.
If you enjoyed this clip and would like to see more like it, please take a moment to subscribe to my Starlo Gets Real channel on YouTube. Until next time, tight lines. Yeah, so anyway, make a note of that Tassie boat hire. He's got four-wheel drive vehicles and those really well set up boats and it's it's quite reasonably affordable. It's a, it's a good way of doing it, especially when you weigh up the cost of getting your own boat and car across there or whatever. Look, that just about brings us to the end of the fishing hub for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed trout time. There's been plenty of comments and questions as we've gone along and my apologies if I haven't got to yours yet. I'll try my best to do so. Now, just like the one we did last week, which was called Rock On and focused on land-based fishing, particularly from rocks and beaches, this one will go up and stay on YouTube forever after tonight. So you can come back and look at it. If you missed the one last week, you can go and have a look at that. They'll stay on there. We'd love to see your comments. We'd love to hear what you'd like us to show you. Some of the old segments from the Rex Hunt show that you'd really like to catch up with again, or maybe some new stuff, whatever. This show is really about teaching you and entertaining you through this fairly tough time in our lives when a lot of us are in COVID lockdown. Anyway, until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines and take care out there.